part of the philosophy of shooting HD video is do we have to have as much stuff? Does it have to take so long to do everything, to light everything? To So Felix and I have over the years been, you know, testing the cameras and really trying to see how far we could push them. Rolling or rolling. Maybe you call me Mark. The bottom line is there's only one thing that takes a photograph, and that's me or other cameramen. If I can get a small box that does everything I do with the best quality in the world, that's what I want, and that's what I think we have here. We had a story we'd been working on for a couple of years for a, a series, and we wrote it for a short film, and here we are. S.W.O.R.D. is about a culture where an oppressive regime has disarmed the people completely. There is a small cadre of what we call liberators. These liberators are at an extraordinary disadvantage because they're unarmed, and they've got to find a way to expose the tyrants and overthrow that whole regime. Here we go, and action. It wasn't designed this way. This is an idea Felix and I had years ago, but it became a tremendously opportunistic way to show what these cameras can do. The look of this is more like a big graphic novel. It's color, it's got edges, it's got black and white. It's gonna have a lot of contrast. It'll look really interesting and different. Jesus, Dad, what do they do to you? <laughs> we did a number of daylight tests where we were you know, going as far as three stops over and three stops under, just to see what latitude that had. And it was, it was pretty darn good. But the real exciting thing for me was I wanted to see what it looked like at night with no light whatsoever, other than natural light. I wish this was a little smaller. <laughs> Look at this, one hand. We put on a 24 Prime and hopped in a car and drove around Hollywood. It's beautiful. Look at that, man. Look at that. Jesus. Let's go to 4,000. Let's be brave. And that's where we tested the camera's 850 ISO all the way up to 20,000. So the static. Whoa, whoa, wait, hold on a second. The light on the driver was like brake lights and things. And when the brake lights were on when we were stopped, it was almost too bright. I'd have to stop down. 8,000, double it. We're in Vegas. Looks like it's all lit up, but it's not. Oh, no. 16,000. Right. This is amazing. I mean, it's pitch black back there, but you'd never know in a million years. 20,000. We're maxing it. Max out. Okay. There's got to be grain in here now. There has to be. A little bit noisy, you mean? Noisy? I don't see. <laughs> there... Oh, I think in the sky, maybe. The best part for me of this camera, I know just from the tests I've seen, I don't know the numbers and the math and the science, but I know what I've seen, and it looks as good or better than anything I work with, and I've worked with all the fancy new stuff from everybody. Once we saw what the camera could do, we were able then to, in scouting our locations, really think about the practicality of lighting. Come on! I'm not getting this. I thought we had to be clever. This one exterior location in particular that was a courtyard we realized we could shoot with that available light and using only minimal amounts of uh, fill light if we came in for close-ups. That made a huge difference in, in cost and, and time and effort. There's a scene in here that uh, was shot 20,000 ISO and the only light in the scene is a lamppost and it's one of the most beautiful images I've seen. I've never seen an image like this. It was actually shot for a different purpose and I'm trying to figure out a way to use it in its native form because it's just so beautiful. Even when you did get character, texture into the project, it wasn't classic uh, video noise in any way. It was very, very natural. You know, it's almost like a filmic grain. You know, it didn't look like bald videotape and it didn't look like hard film. It was just very, very beautiful. I don't know whether to question you or ask for your autograph. The lighting setup is such that you don't feel as though you have to get into a certain place to hit your light. So everything can be a little bit more free and easy in that way. With the option of shooting log or Rec. 709, you're able to use it as kind of a pick it up and shoot or as advanced as a digital cinema camera. Felix and I were very careful about blocking out the scenes and we would start back and work our way in. And once we started working our way in, we pretty much both grabbed handheld cameras. He shot six frames, I shot 12 frames, and we did the whole thing that way. 
So what I've seen so far is just as exciting as can be because it's, it's just you've never seen this before. Not with the, these cameras. The files have been very easy to work with on my Avid. It's a very seamless process and it's what I've been used to and what we've been doing for years now. I mean, literally, you can just take this camera and go make a movie. You absolutely can. It's small, easy, convenient. We've had a great time with it, and it looks great. Go. Unquestionably, I think this new T300 is the way to go.